In this video, I'm going to show you two different ways that you can make a study guide within Notion really effectively if you need to study for exams or you're studying for your dissertation or comprehensive exams, any of those things to be able to memorize information and do active recall really easily. If you're interested in more Notion templates for researchers, graduate students, or academics, I will leave a link below to my Notion templates and you can check out all the ones that I have already available if you get um, overwhelmed with Notion or you don't know all the different things that you can do within it, you can check out those Notion templates below. I'm gonna come in here and I'm gonna write study guide. This is just going to be my study guide um, paper and I'm gonna create two different ways that we can create a study guide. And so I'm gonna actually create these as different pages so it's a little bit easier. So I'm just gonna create a page here by doing forward slash and page. And it's going to go ahead and open up that embedded page. So I'm gonna say this is the simple study guide. And in this, we're not going to use a database. We're gonna use Notion really just as a document to be able to do this. And so I'm gonna come in here and I'm gonna create what's called a toggle list. So this allows you to show and hide different things. So we can create this toggle list and we can say like, this is question one. Um, and we can always like put in an actual question in here. So if you're reading through your notes, one way that I often would study is I would think about what is the question that could be asked on a part of the notes that I'm reading. So if you're reading a, like, about the different chambers of the hearts. You could ask the question, how many different chambers of the hearts are there? What are the different chambers called? What did the different chambers do, right? You have all these different questions that you can ask. So you could say like, how many different chambers of the heart are there? And so now we can toggle this down. This says an empty toggle here. And now we can say that there are four chambers of the heart. You can even list them out or stuff like that. Or you could say name the different chambers of the heart, anything like that. And then we can toggle this right back up. So now all we're doing is seeing the questions and we can ask ourselves, okay, what is the question? And we can toggle it down and see the answer to the question. And what's really nice about this is you can do like star plus or star space and it will do bullet points for you. So you could then write like um, the left atrium, if I can spell and the right atrium, left ventricle, and the right ventricle, right? So now you have all this information. So you could also say how many different ch chambers of the heart are there and name them. So now you have this for active recall. So you can build this out to study. You can also use this as like flashcards or just trying to remember it, toggle down, toggle up. Now, if I come here and I press enter, it's gonna automatically give me a new toggle. So I can go ahead and write new things um, within this. And so we can go to like question two, and you can have another question as you're going through your study guide material. And so this creates a really simple way to just using the toggles to build out that study guide where you don't need another person kind of covering the answer to be able to do active recall. The other thing that can be really nice in building out a study guide like this, and I'm just gonna come up here, is I'm gonna do a toggle, instead of a toggle list, I'm gonna do a toggle heading. And so I'm gonna say these are like heart anatomy. And then I can select all of this and I can move it up into heart anatomy. So now I could have all of my sections of my study guide on this sheet and then I can just toggle down and see the different questions and then toggle to see the answers again. So this is one way to be able to create this study guide. What is a little bit difficult about this is you don't really have the option to like shuffle or choose the order or anything like that. You only really can go through this in the same order. You can always choose different questions, but you can't really change the order that you're seeing the questions in. What's also hard about this is it can be hard to know which ones you're getting right and wrong. So what you can do, one way you can do this is you can say, um, we're gonna do, yeah, we're gonna do a toggle heading three. We're gonna say answer history. Now what we can also do is do a toggle heading three and say correct answer. 
And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna throw the correct answer into the correct answer. So now we can't see that. When we toggle down, we can see our answer history. So we can um, create an answer. Um, I'm just gonna say like, this is gonna be my 10, 6, 2023 20, answer. And I can turn this into a, we'll just do toggle heading three. And then I can write my answer. So four, write, atrium, all of that. And then I can always uh, put in like a to-do and we're just gonna say, is it right or not, basically, or something like that you can do. It's a little bit harder to track your progress with how well you're doing it. One way that I've also seen people do it is they will, you can click on here and let's say the last time you did it, you got it right. You can say the color is the background green. So now you know which ones are green. And then if you got it wrong, you can turn the color into red. And so you can go through this and be able to quickly see which ones are you getting right and wrong. And then as you get more and more right, it's gonna turn more green, which is kind of a neat trick there. Now, the other way we're going to do it is through using a database. So I'm gonna press enter, I'm gonna add another page. And I'm gonna say this is a database study guide. And so I'm just gonna add in a table here. I'm gonna do a table view and I'm gonna create a new database. And this is going to be my study guide. And you can do this if you want, you can have like one study guide database or you can have multiple different study guide database, one for each kind of study guide. If you're gonna um, put them all into the same study guide database, it would have a specific column that tells you what study guide it belongs to. So we're gonna say study guide here. And so now I can say this is an anatomy study guide or, or if it's like a specific unit of a like class or something, I can give it that unit name. And then this is going to be our questions. We can leave that as a um, text field. And then we're gonna add in another talk text property and say, this is our answer. So now we have our question, our answer, and our study guide. We can also add a checkbox property and say that um, this is, did we get it correct? Is the, the question. So if we get it correct, we can check this. If we didn't get it correct, we can uncheck it. So this is kind of building out um, a way to be able to filter for the things that we're consistently getting wrong or things like that. And so then we can ask, put in our questions here. So we can say, how many chambers are in the heart? And what are the names of the different chambers? So we have two questions here. This answer is four. The thing with this is you don't get that ability to do bullet points anymore. You can use like emojis if you wanted to, but you can just write them out. So we have like write atrium. Um, if you want to stay within this, you can hit shift enter and it'll drop down at least. So you do have that left atrium, right ventricle and left ventricle. And we're gonna keep this to anatomy. So now we have the ability to do this. What's nice is this is a database, right? So we can actually filter and sort these on different things. So I can create a new view or I can just use this view. And one thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to do a filter by the study guide. I'm gonna only allow anatomy questions on here. So that now filters me down to the anatomy questions. And then I can do another filter for correct and only if correct is unchecked, only if I'm getting it wrong. So this can be like learning and then like um, active recalled or spaced repetition, stuff like that. You can have different tabs available for this. So with that, because I have it filtered to study guide, I don't really need this study guide property um, within this view. So I can hide that study guide property. So now all I have is the question answer and whether it's correct or not. But in this view, this isn't really helpful to me because I can see the answers, right? So what we can do instead is I'm going to change the layout from a table to a gallery view. 
And now we can make this card size small um, and we're not going to have any. You can do, um, like right now, I'm just gonna say none here. And so right now, all I have is the question. When I click on it, I can then open up and see the answer and say, oh, yep, I got that correct. Now that goes away from this list, but it's still within my database. I can still use it later on. And then I can click in here and see if I got this correct or not as well. And so this is the way to be able to create out a study guide using this system. Now, if we wanted to sort and we wanted to like randomize it, I'm gonna just come in here and have this be a table view just so I can see everything again. We can come in here and we're going to add like, for example, you could add like a number and you can have different numbers in here. So you can put in a number here and say this is like um, three and then two, and now you can sort it differently and you can change those numbers out. It would be nice if Notion had like a random number generator where you could do that and then just sort based off that, but they don't really have that. So now you have um, your gallery view and then you can always sort by the number. And so we can say the number is ascending and so you come in here and then you can always come in here and say this is actually one and that's going to change the sort here. Um, so these are the different things you can do to allow yourself to be able to do that. So now you have correct is unchecked. So when you come in here, it's gonna fall off the list as you get it right. And you can always re um, reset that or anything like that. So one way to reset it, let's just go through that. I'm gonna create an actual button up here. And we're gonna say, this is gonna be reset correct. So if you're going into a new study session, you wanna go ahead and reset it. We're going to add a step. We're gonna edit pages in, and I'm gonna select this study guide database. We can edit all the pages. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna set correct. And then we're gonna set it to uncheck. So it's gonna be unchecked and we can click done here. So now when I reset correct, they all appear because now it took all of those pages and made them all unchecked. And so that's one thing, things you can do is use the automations to help you build out and be able to reset for a new study session or anything like that. I hope this helped you if you're trying to build out a study guide with a notion to know a couple different ways that you can build that study guide out. And if you want more Notion templates, you can check out my link in the description below. And also, if you want to check out more videos related to Notion, specifically for graduate students and academics, you can check out these videos um, available here. And I hope to see you in the next video.